I graduated college like a year ago, but you know, just in case you didn't know. If you saw my little Austin diary video, then I already kind of spilled my guts a little bit on like my post-grad thoughts and just kind of like where I'm at in my life. And so I'm gonna be doing the same thing today, but in a much more structured format. I'm gonna be talking about a few different topics like the biggest changes to expect after graduating, making friends, finances, just some general existential thoughts that I've had since graduating and all that fun stuff. So if you only care about like certain topics, I'm going to put all the time codes below so you can skip around to different topics if you want to. Okay, let's jump in. Giant sigh for what we're about to get into. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is just the general big question, big elephant in the room. What is it like switching from a full-time student to full-time working? I could honestly just talk about this like single topic the entire day. I like to think about it. Imagine your life is a TV show. And when you're growing up, like every school year is like a season on your show. In most TV shows, there's like two plots. There's plots within an episode and there's like an overarching season plot. So it's like the same for your life. Like say you're a freshman in college, you know, episode one might be like starting classes, going to your first party. You know, there's like a few plots happening in that first episode, but your whole season arc is like completing your first year of college. And then next season, it's a new topic. So there's constantly different stuff happening, excitement, highs, lows, everything that a good TV show needs and that your life needs. And then when you graduate, it's like your show gets canceled. Okay, that was a little dramatic, but basically what I meant was in college you have all these built-in activities and goals and milestones like parties, club meetings, a test you have to pass, a whole class you have to pass. It's like you're living on a TV show that's fun and stressful and exciting with this pre-written plot because there's just so much happening. But then when you graduate, there are none of those like set things for you. There are still some big life goals and things to hit, like getting married, buying a house, retiring, but there are like a lot longer stretches. And so it is really weird going from having all these goals that you're achieving daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly to just kind of floating around in like the workforce world and having like some long-term like 10-year goals. You have to personally work really hard to make sure that you keep your life fresh and fun and you set up things for yourself and it's kind of cool that you have control over that like you're not assigned a test or assigned a paper to do you can make those milestones for yourself but if you don't work hard to make those milestones for yourself then it really just feels like life passes you by and time flies so fast if you don't have memorable things or goals that you're doing week to week Now let's talk about the pandemic and post-grad. I know this is like very specific to me, so I'm just gonna talk about this briefly. But it was definitely weird graduating into a pandemic. There's like the obvious things, like the economy was just rough and the job market was rough. And I was really thankful that I did find a job like a month after graduating. I know my boyfriend didn't start working until like six months after graduating. And then there's the whole new world of working at home, which is a whole different topic. And yeah, it was just a weird time. It's still a weird time. We're still, we're still in it. But I think the weirdest, weirdest part and like the hardest part for me was socially. During college, you have all these very specific built-in friend times. Like, even if you never hang out with anybody and you have no friends, you're going to interact with people in classes. Even just walking on campus and being surrounded by tons of people who are in kind of like the same life situation as you, there's something like very cool about just having that like sense of community on campus, even if you have no friends. Just in general after college, people go all over the country, all over the world, all over the state, and even people who are still living within your city, it just takes so much more commitment and like work to make sure you see them. Am I lonely because there's no parties happening because of COVID, or am I lonely because my friends moved away? You know, I guess both, but yeah, just both. On the real though, I wish I had all these great tips for making friends post-grad, but I just really haven't made any because all my ideas for how to make friends post-grad, we just can't really do. So I'll share my ideas with you anyway, even though I haven't done them because of COVID.
One tip I would say just in general that helps with your post-grad life but also making friends is to join some kind of college club equivalent. I used to dance and I've really been wanting to take dance classes weekly and then hopefully I would also make friends in my dance classes. And it doesn't have to be dance, like your community could have like a local soccer team. You could just go to the same coffee shop every single morning and you get to know the people there. Also, if you weren't working at home because of the pandemic, you would have co-workers that hopefully you would befriend. Also, don't forget about social media. It can be kind of weird just like cold messaging people online and you definitely want to make sure you're safe. But I feel like in today's age, it's like getting less and less weird and more and more common. If you like see someone on social media who lives in your area, maybe you have like one mutual friend or something like that and you're both into like soccer, you know, maybe just give them a follow. If they follow you back, you could send them a little message like, hey, you want to meet up? And to me, that feels so intimidating and uncomfortable, but also they're just like a social profile. They're not a real person. Person, you know, so if they just reject you, it's like whatever. Financially planning to buy a house or renting. And I feel like this wasn't asked, but it also includes things like retirement, savings. I'm gonna talk really quickly about all financial things of post-grad, which also could be its own video, but we're just gonna do a little summary in this video. So first I'm going to talk about renting versus owning a house, which kind of becomes like your first big thought post-grad after you get a job. The first thing is like, what's my job going to be? And then after that, it's like the next thing is kind of like owning a house, which is just so weird to think about. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing a year from now. Like six months ago, I had a completely different job and I had no idea I would now be freelance, which is sometimes like kind of soul crushingly overwhelming and then other times it feels very exciting because the possibilities are so endless after graduation and if you have like a very stable track like you want to be like a doctor or a lawyer or you're already married then owning a house feels like it makes a lot more sense I just can't imagine owning a house for like years <laughs> I know this is a post-grad video, but I would just like to point out some smart financial things you can do if you're still in college that will help so much after you graduate. So I didn't have a job throughout college until my senior year and I tried to save as much money of it as I could and that helped so much after I graduated. I feel like in college I just never really thought about life after college besides like what cool job I wanted to have, but I didn't think about, you know, what if I'm laid off for a month or if I can't find a job for six months, you know, what am I gonna do? So having a little nest egg of savings when I graduated was so helpful. I don't think I ever would have been able to quit my nine to five and make the leap to being freelance, which can be unstable for sure, if I didn't already have savings from when I worked in college. So if you are still in college, PSA, to spend money on yourself, but also save as much as you can for after you graduate, your future self is gonna really appreciate it. And the last question I'm going to answer is, where do you see yourself in five years? And the truth is, I don't know. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but there's just infinite possibilities after you graduate and there's something very overwhelming and also very cool and exciting about that. I always felt like I had personal autonomy in college and growing up, but I don't think I did. Well, my southern accent just came out there, I feel like. Like I mentioned in college, it is pretty structured. You can like choose your own classes, but they have to be working towards your major and graduation. You can live wherever you want, but you probably have roommates, so that dictates it some. So it's like you have all this new freedom, but also not really. But then after you graduate, you just, you have unlimited freedom. I mean, you still have to like have a job and support yourself, but I, I could live in any country, any state, any town. Even within a city, I could live wherever I want. I can choose how much of my income I want to spend on rent. I could just quit my job and be an Uber driver tomorrow. I could work at a flower shop tomorrow. I mean, I have to get the job, but still, like, you, you can just make all those decisions. Like, I know that's so obvious, like, yeah, of course, Ollie, you can do whatever you want, but like, you can. Like, if my life just goes to shit, I can just move to Bali and work at a coffee shop. Like, that could be my plan B in life. Whenever 
whenever my boyfriend started working, they like congratulated him and said, congrats on the first day of the rest of your life. And that just felt like so depressing to me because in a way it's kind of true and kind of not true. It's true in the sense of like, it's not just his first day of work at this job. It's like his first day of working full time forever. Like for the rest of his life, like he can move companies, but he's just entering the workforce for the next 40 years. I don't know, it just made me feel so trapped and it wasn't even my job. I was like, oh my gosh, you have to do this forever. But then the other part of me was like, well, that's not entirely true. He could save like 50% of his salary and just take like a year off next year and then like repeat over and over for the rest of his life. That's kind of weird and maybe not the most realistic. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is because life is a video game and you can do whatever you want. In conclusion, there is no conclusion. But yeah, that's everything that's been swirling around my brain from a practical standpoint and an existential standpoint. So let me know if you'd like more practical content or existential content, because I've got both up in my noggin. But for real, I made a lot of college content in college, obviously, and I feel like it's only fitting now that I make a lot of post-grad content because that's what's happening in my life. So let me know in general if you're interested in post-grad content, just lifestyle content in my life, or just content for navigating your 20s because that's where I'm at right now. Or if you want none of that, then feel free to let me know that too. Okay, I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Bye.